Hi. Welcome to Artist and Critic. We're going to continue our discussion of contemporary art and how it reveals the problems facing society and uh, how art itself has become weakened and in its weakness reflects the problems of individual human beings and the society in which we live. Now the basic uh, point today and for the next three programs, we're considering a three-part series here, is in terms of, of wholeness, how art either reflects wholeness or fragmentation. And when we talk about wholeness, we can talk about um, a certain uh, integration of personality, a certain uh, feeling of completeness where everything seems to hang together, or uh, a feeling of having roots in existence, that life has uh, tremendous meaning and significance for us. Now, it's my position that contemporary art uh, almost entirely is not an art of wholeness, uh, but rather one of fragmentation that talks about our problems, our, our loss of contact with nature, if we will, in a technological society, a loss of contact with God, if we want to become cosmic about it, uh, a loss of contact with our deepest inner personalities. Now we're, we're going to be, uh, through the process of these three programs, we're going to be looking at works that, that have wholeness and works that don't. Some will have a religious nature and we'll talk about Christ as being not only a reality, a religious reality uh, that signifies wholeness, but we'll be talking about uh, Christ as a, as, as a symbol of wholeness. We'll be talking about paintings and different compositional arrangements as either symbols of wholeness or a fragmentation. Now, <laughs> bear with me. If, if we get uh, a little lost, I, th I think it's fairly, it'll be fairly clear as we get into it, but it's, a very, it's both very intangible, as the subject uh, suggests, as I've been describing it, and, and yet very real. It's something that we face in our lives, and perhaps that's one of the reasons that the hostages and their return have meant so much to the American people, not only just the natural sense of, of fulfillment uh, for them, for their sake, and we're glad that they're safe in return, but, but somehow it, it gives a little meaning in our lives, perhaps. Okay, so if, if we look at the first picture then, and uh, it's El Greco's Adoration of the Shepherds, painted around 1600. And it, it would be my position that perhaps the composition itself would not suggest wholeness, but the idea of, of Christ uh, and the sense of mystical light that comes from the picture suggests a certain wholeness. There, uh, there's a tremendous amount of movement in the picture, but it's the movement of religious ecstasy of a sense of, of total completion. And in the luminous center of the picture, of course, the lower center, the Christ child is bathed in light upon the uh, white cloth. Mary, in, in sort of a pinky color, uh, looks down. And, and down below uh, the shepherds, there's a, a, a lamb. Uh, and of course, Christ is called the Lamb of God. And you'll notice the position of the feet of the lamb and of Christ. The, the limbs of both of the two objects are similar. So that obviously El Greco is saying that there are two parts of the same thing. And of course, the shepherds. Why, why are the shepherds called in by the angel to uh, bear witness to the birth of Christ? And it's because Christ himself will be, be called the good shepherd uh, because he is the lamb of God, as we say. And, and what do shepherds deal with, of course, but sheep and lamb. So here we have a picture uh, where the the figures in the background are in ecstasy. Angels hover over in, in a kind of a curving triad. And of course, the two shepherds in the foreground frame the opening for our visual movement and our spiritual feeling into Christ here. See? So I would say that wholeness here is not necessarily compositional. It's a feeling of wholeness, uh, a symbolical level of wholeness. Okay, we go to the <clears throat> next picture, and it's my premise that this is a picture of fragmentation rather than wholeness. Fragmentation both compositionally as well as the content, that is, the feelings or ideas expressed in this. And uh, 
I, I'm taking it fairly easy on myself here because I, it's, it's obvious that in Fernand Leger's painting here of the early 20th century called Nudes in the Forest, he's talking about the mechanization of contemporary man, 20th century man, and these robots struggle in a mechanized forest. The trees on the left look like tubes of metal and the bodies themselves that you can perhaps make out in the jumbled complexity of the picture look like the fallen remnants of a, of a robot civilization, somewhat reminding us perhaps of the rubble of, of classical Greece or, or Rome here. But, but this is what I'm talking about. This, this picture has a lack of wholeness. It expresses our personal fragmentation, yours and mine, living in this century, un unavoidably so, and throughout the entire century, and it's ex as existent now as it was then, of course. Andrew Wyeth, in his picture called The Hunter, perhaps tells us, too, of our fragmented fate, the fate of, of struggle, of loss of self, of being a, a prey, really, say, because where is the hunter here? And he, you see that tiny little figure at the right center of the picture just in, below the tree. And we say, why does the tree loom so large and why does the branch reach out toward us? It's because we are the quarry of the hunter. We're sitting in that tree visually. Wyeth has placed us there, whether we're squirrel, bird, or what have you, to say that mankind is a victim in the 20th century. There's a sense of a, a loss of self that forces are working on us that we cannot control. Another painting by Wyeth called The Tenant Farm, and of course, w of course Wyeth is a contemporary artist painting today, and we see the deer hanging from the tree. Now this is a common occurrence in rural settings where the hunter hangs the deer to cure, uh, cleans it out, and so forth. But aren't we the deer? in this picture? Isn't the vulnerability of ourselves uh, a loss of meaning in our lives, perhaps, as we hang out there in the cold, snowy day, uh, set, set apart from that stark, seemingly deserted dwelling? Michelangelo, that great artist of the 15th and 16th centuries in Italy suggests a sense of struggle and, and lack of wholeness. Now, lack of wholeness uh, and has nothing to do with artistic or aesthetic qualities. We, we, an artist can express a lack of wholeness and still be a, a genius, as, as Michelangelo does in this work from the tomb of the Medici uh, called Day. And Michelangelo has four sculptures on opposite sides of the, the chapel, signifying the times of, of day. Day, twilight, night, and dawn, and e two flanking the uh, two statues of the Medici. Now, we say wholeness has nothing to do with aesthetic qualities in one sense, because this is a masterpiece of a sculpture. But wholeness, as I'm using it, may be, sim may be a transitory event. It may come and go in our sense of, of human uh, fulfillment, the sense that our lives have, have meaning, our character is being fully expressed, and that we're not groping, we're not struggling, we're not reaching. And of course, all of these uh, struggling modes are part of human existence. Uh, I'm talking in a way, perhaps, about these rare transcendental moments that, that may come to us that, that we strive for, where all's right with the world, if you will. so that. In Michelangelo's sculpture day here, why is it not whole, despite it being an aesthetic masterpiece? Because there's a feeling of convolution and twisting in upon itself of the figure. Look at that massive, huge shoulder, how the <clears throat> head, first of all, peers fearfully over it, uh, like a sun rising over a mountain slope, but nonetheless fearing to rise and face the day, in a sense. Look how the arm pulls back across the body while the upper leg crosses toward us over the foreground leg so that we have a twisting of the body. So look at the left arm of the figure twisting around behind the body and coming around toward us. Uh, very rough cut in the stone. It's not finished. But this sense of, of twisting, of convolution, is this sense of, of fragmentation, if you will, or, 
or lack of, of wholeness. Of course, according to Jung, the psychologist, uh, wholeness is the ultimate goal for humanity. When we've, we've got our act together, when our unconscious processes and con conscious processes are working in great harmony. Or we would say, if in a religious sense, if, if our faith in life, our faith in Christ, our faith in God, or whatever our gods happen to be, are whole, are in balance and harmony, then we have a sense of, of being right with the world, that, that in a sense the sun rises and sets with our help, in a sense, that we take part in this cosmic drama and we're not simply lost in a meaningless, mundane rat race of life. Now we look at, correctly, at Michelangelo's Twilight, a similar figure, and while day suggested some of the vigor, if fearful, quality of the day, twilight suggests some of the slumping weariness of the end of day as we move a transitory stage between day and, and night. But again, we have a feeling of the leg locked over the thigh, uh, a certain immobility, the head sinks on the chest, and, and there's a, a, a lethargy, a lack of, of, of force, a lack of wholeness, even here, that suggests this lack of wholeness. And if we could, would examine all four statues, night is troubled by nightmares, dawn sleepily stretches, <clears throat> and seemingly will never rise to action. So that Michelangelo is saying something here about uh, a, a loss of, of harmony, uh, the, the stopping of time, the fearful quality of time, how it devours all humanity, uh, something aside from the sense of spiritual wholeness, if we so use Christ again as a symbol that he will use with Christ in other of his famous works. <clears throat> so we say again, well, what is wholeness? I would say in a compositional sense, in a feeling sense, that Manet's Olympia, painted in the 1860s, is, expresses wholeness. It expresses wholeness in the composition. There's a certain stability of the composition. We could say, well, maybe wholeness compositionally has to do with classicism, a certain order, a certain containment of forms. But uh, it goes beyond that, as we'll see. What we're talking about here is a certain wholeness in the, in the human being here, in Olympia herself, as she looks out at us with a feeling of, of great roundedness of character and presence of mind, if you will, a feeling that she has a solid niche in the cosmic order of the universe and as it's reflected in everyday life. <clears throat> Does this great painting by uh, Eugene <coughs> Delacroix in the early part of the 19th century Arab writer attacked by a lion have wholeness? Uh, I would say it has tremendous artistic unity, design unity, but wholeness in the sense of an attainment of a level of contemplative calm where one uh, feels part of a great moving wholeness of the universe, I would say no. I would say there's too much struggle in here, even though the rider and the horse and the lion are enmeshed uh, into a totality, it's, it's the enmeshment of struggle, of strife, of earthly human existence where we battle out our, our days, in a sense, hoping for these transitory mo uh, moments of wholeness. Perhaps these moments of wholeness, not to overwork the term, but I, I have a little bit of difficulty trying to find an adequate <laughs> substitute for it. Uh, perhaps they are attained more easily in other ages, uh, and perhaps it's just our own modern age that, that lacks it. Uh, Rembrandt, for example, in this marvelous self-portrait in his middle years at the Frick Collection, has attained wholeness here. Psychic wholeness, psychological wholeness, spiritual wholeness, a sense of a fulfilled meaning. The whole human figure here, as well as the painting itself, resonates with a, a, a rich spiritual, intellectual, and physical fulfillment. The massy physicality of it suggests is the equivalent of the spiritual massiveness of this. So, see, this is a position, spiritual position, that is possible for us to attain. I don't believe we have it today. I don't believe our art shows that we have it. I don't believe the pace of our life 
uh, shows we have it. I don't believe our worries and our political and economic concerns, as justified as they may be, tell that we have it. The po pollution problems, uh, problems of morality, dishonesty, greed in government, uh, the destruction of the land, uh, poisoning of our groundwater sources, whatever the latest news, whatever nightmare vision of our world the latest news has told us, indicate that we don't have it as a people. Perhaps individuals among us do. Here's an early Rembrandt self-portrait when he is <clears throat> 21, 22. Uh, I would say this has wholeness, but it's the wholeness of immaturity. Immaturity before, uh, as Christ would say, uh, being reborn again in, in our middle years or whenever it may happen as perhaps the midlife crisis is the physiological and psychological time when we must reassess our position in life, the meaning life has for it, us, how we will face death because it is closer to us. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is the psychological equivalent of a Christ spiritual command that uh, we will not see heaven unless we are born again. So, uh, Rembrandt has not been born again in this particular picture, although he has a beautiful, natural, youthful wholeness and integration of personality and a great sense of the courageous ability to face whatever challenges that come to him in the future. <coughs> this self-portrait by Van Gogh with the cut-off ear is obviously a picture of fragmentation, not of wholeness. The weariness in the expression, the fact that he's cut off his ear, the, the, the dazed gaze tell us this is not wholeness. As an artwork, as, as a contained unit with, of the head and shoulders within the picture, it has an, an aesthetic or design wholeness, but not a psychological or spiritual wholeness. This is the ancestor of our own spiritual sufferings, our lack of spirituality, which is reflected so much in contemporary painting. Courbet's Man with a Pipe, his self-portrait, and I show it just because it has a pipe as Van Gogh sought uh, fulfillment with his own pipe after cutting off his ear. This is not wholeness. See, this is self-adoration, the presentation of oneself for the adoration of the viewer. It's wholeness aesthetically and artistically in this marvelously solid head, but it's, it's very undeveloped in a psychological, spiritual sense. It's very infantile, if we will, very egocentric in a sense. Remember another early self-portrait by Rembrandt very quickly to tell us that uh, we aren't always in the state of uh, totality, of meaningfulness with the universe, if we, if we can put it that way. Look at the dark shadow that covers his mind, covers his head. Light is there, and it will intrude off and on at later times, as we've seen. But this is a portrait of suffering, of being lost in darkness, and could very easily, obviously, symbolize our own present state. This self-portrait by Degas is not a portrait of wholeness uh, because of the troubled expression on the face, the clashing opposites of light and dark meeting on the face. And despite Degas' des wonderful use of form, uh, in one sense destroys the form. And in a psychological sense, splits the painting, and in an aesthetic sense, really, light and dark splits the painting into two sides, one suggesting enlightenment and the other deep dar the darkness of the abyss of despair, of unknowing, if we wanted to put it that way. And of course, H.C. Westerman's contemporary uh, memorial to the idea of man is obviously not a symbol of wholeness, of the totality of the hu human existence, the place of the meaning of the hum our human experience in life, in the plan of the universe, in God's plan, if we would look at it that way. But is a symbol and expression of just how far we have fallen spiritually, intellectually, philosophically, how far our artists have fallen. Francis Bacon's figure in a landscape, again, can hardly be made out, but the destroyed figure in the center, the, the frazzled, generalized landscape, fragmentation, 
suggests obviously this is not wholeness. This is contemporary suffering, perhaps made worse by the images that the artists create for us. And as a fact, I'm sure I feel that way, that these images are, make our lives worse, our spiritual and psychological journeys more difficult because we not only have to overcome life itself <clears throat> and the difficulties, the spiritual and moral difficulties of our own times, the realities, but the symbolic images that artists create to tell us how bad things are as if we didn't know already. We, we need images that capture both the reality of life and transcend them, that give us images that we can grow from, develop from. And in this earlier work by Pavel Chelichev <clears throat> called Hide and Seek, we see an image of spiritual and psychological sickness. It's, it's an a, a extremely striking picture. We look at the central tree form, uh, a female figure clutching the trunk. The roots become the toes of a foot. And of course, the negative space around the tree, the light areas become faces that shriek their suffering. The nerve ends and blood vessels of the heads seem to throb and pulsate with the terror and destruction of Chelichev. This is a self-portrait, obviously. This is how he feels. The, the limbs of the tree reach up like hands. And these images are images of fragmentation, just as this contemporary image by Jasper Johns, target with four faces, is not an image of wholeness, despite the, full, the sim simplicity and fullness of the circle. See, we can talk about the circle as a symbol of, of, of wholeness, of integration of personality, the mandala, as Jung has used it. But here, <clears throat> this is not a true mandala. This is using a circle to suggest that the four imprisoned people, perhaps like the Iranian hostages, we can bring in a contemporary uh, image here, are the target of the brutality of their captors. Or, obviously, this was done before this incident, and Johns is talking about society uh, destroying us. We are the victims. We are the four faces. And again, I would say that may be true, but these images do not sustain us. These are not images of wholeness. Neither is Jackson Pollock's autumn rhythm. This is a symbol of fragmentation, of chaos. This is not a symbol of wholeness. Aesthetically, there is a certain confusing, chaotic unity as the whole surface of the picture is covered by these twisting drips of paint. But psychologically, symbolically, and spiritually, this is a symbol of the decline of Pollock, the, the fragmentation of his personality, and a symbol of the fragmentation of our own time. Yves Tanguy, in his, <clears throat> excuse me, indefinite divisibility in, done in 1942 during the war years, a surrealist piece using his typical bone-like uh, structures. This is not a symbol of wholeness, of <coughs> fulfillment, <coughs> although aesthetically it might be considered effective. But this is the boneyard, the graveyard of contemporary spirituality. Uh, in a sense, it could be almost a surrealist tinker toy land where the table is set at the lower left for a repast of nothingness. Uh, a cross-like form, since we're, we're bringing in Christ as a symbol of the self, seems to rest laconically cast to the side, to the left, while a new structure at the right, composed of mechanical, skeletal parts, rises up without much hope, much uh, sense of fulfillment. De Kooning, 1955, composition. This is not a symbol of wholeness. This is a simple symbol of de Kooning's emotional suffering, our own emotional suffering, chaos, and fragmentation. Our art and artists, contemporary artists, have let us down. See, they have let us down. And if we, if we go back to past times, uh, we look at Michelangelo's masterpiece from the Sistine Chapel, one of the series of pictures, The Fall of Man and the Expulsion from the Garden of Eden. We can perhaps see the schism the, the a split uh, in mankind, and we say this is a masterpiece aesthetically, but this is not a symbol of wholeness, uh, because we have uh, before the fall on the left and the schism, the split down the center, and on the right, the expulsion of Adam and Eve from paradise. Adam and Eve, we are Adam and Eve. See, 
we, the contemporary Adam, Adams and Eves, have been cast from the Garden of Paradise, the paradise of, of psychological wholeness, of spiritual fulfillment. And we're wandering around buying our cars and buying our homes, and, or trying to buy homes with our increasing mortgage rates and payments and so forth, uh, trying to accrue material symbols around us that make us feel whole, but none of them are satisfying. None of them come from within, in whatever measure, either within ourselves psychologically or in some religious sense, so that we're, we're starving spiritually, psychologically, and our art is starved and continues to starve us. <clears throat> in this Rembrandt uh, painting, The Blinding of Samson, see, a masterpiece by the great artist whom we talked about uh, being whole in the self-portrait, but the, I don't believe this picture is a symbol of wholeness. Aren't we, the Samson, in a psychological sense, being blinded uh, in the lower right center, uh, being held down, our hair having been cut off, our power, our connection with our roots in a sense, our connection with God, if you will have it that way. Um, Delilah about to leave the darkened pit that Samson is now in, the darkness of unconsciousness, of lack of fulfillment, of loss of connection with God, of loss of connection with whatever religious symbols we use, uh, Christ. Uh, Delilah holding Samson's hair, looking back with a, both, um, a gaze both fearful and amazed, is about to depart through that triangular opening into the light. And Samson is doomed to not only physical darkness, but spiritual darkness. See. Uh, in Jungian terms, we could say that, that Samson <clears throat> is descending into the darkness of the unconscious because his, his total personality has been fragmented, symbolized by the loss of, of that hair. See. And uh, in a spiritual sense, Samson has lost contact with the roots, uh, his roots in God. We'll conclude today's program with this. And if you're overwhelmed by the fragmentation and negativity of it, hold on for the next two programs where we will explore some of the positive images. But we are surrounded in our time by negative, destructive images, fragmentation, when we do need spiritual and psychological wholeness in our artworks. Thanks for being with me. Uh, the program's Artisan Critic. My name's Don Gray. Bye-bye.